So as you can see, my wheel here is facing straight. But if we go inside, my steering wheel is almost completely turned this way. So the alignment is totally, totally messed up now. The rains have returned to Oregon once again, and that means that it's officially the start of rainy season. That also means that it's the start of snowy season, so I'm excited to film some snowy videos in the very near future, but today I'm headed to the coast, and in case you missed last week's video and you're wondering what the heck is going on with the camper, don't worry. I haven't sold or gotten rid of the Bigfoot camper. Now, before everybody gets all worked up over the camper, don't worry, I still have the Bigfoot camper. It's safe and sound, parked in my driveway, off of the truck as I get prepared to fix it up. I'm using this canopy in the meantime. That way I could still do some truck camping while I'm working on the camper. Don't worry, I still have the camper. Hey buddy. <laughs> So I pulled over here not only to get a quick look at the absolutely stunning view right here in front of us, but I also thought that this might be a good spot to come back later tonight and sleep in the back of the truck. Unfortunately, there is no overnight parking here, which is such a shame because this would just be like an otherworldly spot, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm sure we'll still find a good spot either way. I'm really excited right now, guys. I just stopped by at my favorite shellfish farm in Oregon. I got some oysters, and I must say the oysters that they carry there are just some of the best that I've ever had, if not the best that I've ever had. So super stoked, and I can't wait to get to eating them a little bit later. Now, I'm not actually gonna be able to spend the night right here on the beach in the sand because A, it's not permitted, and B, the tide, as you might have seen in some of the footage, the tide comes in really high here, and I just wouldn't be comfortable sleeping in my truck not knowing exactly how high the tide is gonna get. But I did figure that while I'm here, while I'm in the area, I might as well swing by, shuck a couple oysters, eat them, and then from here we'll go try to find our spot for the night. I've actually filmed here a couple times in past videos so you might be familiar with this spot.
So these are the oysters. These are petite oysters. They're kind of on the small side, but I honestly don't like those big, fat, meaty, chunky oysters. They're like way too much to, uh, to take in at once. So I'm gonna do my best to show you how I shuck oysters. I don't have that much experience compared to some, but I do know that a towel is definitely beneficial. That way, in case you slip or something, you don't stab your hand with the knife. This is actually a shucking knife. It's made specifically to open up oysters. If you can tell, it's actually a very dull blade. It's not really a knife. You can't cut anything with this, and that's very, uh, that's very intentional. Obviously, a shucking knife, you don't want a nice sharp knife because if you slip, you don't want to stab yourself with a sharp knife. So anyways, shucking knife, towel, it's really easy. There's a little, there's a little crease right in there. Hopefully you could see. There's a little crease right in here that you kind of just wedge the knife under and you try your best to get as much leverage as you can and then you kind of just like twist it and pop it open, you'll see. So you just put the knife in there And there it, there it is. Nice, beautiful oyster. I'm just gonna do this one without the hot sauce or the mignonette, and then we'll put some on the other ones. Wow. This one had so much flavor and the brine was so salty. It tasted, the brine, it pretty much just tasted like salt water. Really good, that one was really good. Okay, now, now I'm gonna do one with a little bit of hot sauce and some mignonette. Here's the hot sauce, and here's the mignonette. So good. I'd like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, GrowWatt. This is the GrowWatt Infinity 1500 portable power station, and this thing is an absolute beast. It's got a max output of 2000 watts, which is more than enough juice for most large appliances. It has a lightning fast charge time of zero to 100% in just two hours via AC or 2.5 hours with solar. It has 12 outlets total, which can be used at the same time and a wireless charging pad up top. If you happen to see my video last week, you saw me cook an entire turkey breast in an instant pot out of the back of my truck to cook the turkey. Today, I'm gonna to be using the Growot Infinity 1500 portable power generator. This thing is a beast. The entire turkey breast got cooked in the pressure cooker in 30 minutes, and the Growot Infinity 1500 only went down to 64%. That is impressive. One of the coolest features about the Infinity 1500 is that it's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capable. You just download an app right onto your phone and from there you're able to monitor your battery level, you're able to schedule a timer for when you want this thing to go on and off. And there's a lot of other cool things you can do from the app. For more information on the Growout Infinity 1500, go ahead and click on the link in the description box down below. Thank you once again to Growout for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the paid programming. All right, well that was absolutely delicious, but now I gotta get a move on because I wanna find a spot where I can actually spend the night. And uh, looks like the tide is, looks like the tide is starting to come in a bit. Man, every time I go to that beach, I'm tempted to just spend the night right there in the sand. It's so perfect. It's such such a perfect spot, but I mean, I guess they must prohibit camping there for a reason, right?
That's the thing about the Oregon coast, guys. At least up here in Northern Oregon. Such a tease because there's so many of these freaking epic views, but you can't actually spend the night anywhere. It sucks. All I wanna do is just stay right here with this amazing view in front of me, but alas, no overnight camping here. Now I'm gonna head out of here and drive about 40 minutes to the spot that I'm gonna be spending the night. Sadly, by the time I get there, it will be dark, so won't have a view tonight, but I'll wake up in the morning to a spectacular view, hopefully. It's nice to, it's nice to get an actual sunset because earlier it was just dumping rain, so I thought it would just be rainy all day and I wouldn't get a coastal sunset, but we got one, baby. Holy moly guys, so I left the coast because there was just nowhere to camp. Everywhere I tried to camp, there was no overnight parking signs. So I decided that I would just camp in the forest that is between the coast and Portland. And I'm driving through the forest, it's super dark, super foggy, it's already kind of a sketchy drive. And all of a sudden I see this sign overhead that says, caution, ice. And within like three seconds of seeing that sign, I hit a patch of ice. The truck completely lost control. And thank the heavens there was no oncoming traffic, but I slid over into the opposite lane and hit the wall. I pulled over, got out to assess the damage, and somehow there's no dents, there's no marks, there's nothing on the truck, which is pretty crazy because I literally hit a wall. Oh boy, I am I'm very lucky that nothing worse happened because for a moment I thought that the truck was going to be pretty screwed. And now I still don't know where I'm going to spend the night, but hopefully I can make it there without another incident. I discovered that although there's no marks on the exterior of the truck, uh, my alignment is seriously, seriously messed up. The steering wheel will be pretty much completely 90 degrees of where it's supposed to be, and the wheels are straight. Quite sketchy. So I pulled over at a random pullout here on the side of the road, and this is where I'm going to spend the night. I don't want to continue driving in the dark with my alignment all messed up, ice on the ground. It just it doesn't make sense to continue driving. So I just pulled over at the, the first pullout that... I saw that I'm able to park at, so camp for the night, I guess. I guess I should just be happy and lucky and grateful that nothing worse happened because it could have been a lot worse. If I was going faster when I hit that patch of ice, I don't even want to think about what could have happened because it was on a bridge and yeah, I mean, that could have just ended really unfortunately. When in doubt, always go with the instant shin ramen. This is a good fallback plan. I was originally gonna make some quesadillas, but that's a little bit too much effort right now. And I just don't wanna deal with it. So shin, it is. really does hit the spot right now. There's just something, something comforting about a nice bowl of ramen. I just realized though that this is gonna be the second video in a row that I posted where I'm eating ramen. So I realized something as I was sitting there eating. I'm currently in the Tillamook Forest right off the main highway at a pullout that's right in plain sight, visible from the road. And this is this is not the safest area in terms of crime. You know, Portland is a short drive away and there's all kinds of auto theft, break-ins, catalyt catalytic converter theft. There's all of that that goes on right in Portland. 
and I'm not that far away from there. So to just have my truck sitting here in plain sight right off the highway when I personally have seen some sketchy stuff in this forest, I don't know if that's a smart idea, guys. Especially, especially this, is, this camper shell doesn't lock. Someone can open it right up. You know, if they're trying to take something and then I'm in here, what's going to happen? I don't know. I don't want to find out though. So I think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to try to drive home. I know that I said it's kind of sketchy conditions, but man, I just, I'm just going to take it slow, keep my hazards on and try to get as far from here as possible because I really don't feel comfortable with my truck. I don't feel comfortable sleeping in here when my truck is just visible from the road because like I said, it's just not, it's not a very safe area for that in my opinion. So this is just a bad situation all around. Godspeed. Well, I made it. I finally, finally made it. It took about two hours to get home. What would normally take about 35 minutes. I was going like 30 or less the entire way back. I took surface streets. It was a long drive and I'm tired, but I made it and that's what's important. So as you can see, my wheel here is facing straight. But if we go inside, my steering wheel is almost completely turned this way. So the alignment is totally, totally messed up now. Also, the wheel is completely angled inwards. So it seems like something in there is bent, possibly. Now, I really, really hope, you know, fingers crossed that it just needs an alignment, but something tells me that something in my suspension is bent and it's gonna need replacing. Hopefully not. But I have a tow truck coming right now, so I guess we'll see the damage later today. All right guys, so it's a couple days later now and I am more familiar with exactly what happened to the truck and what the damage is. So the deal is I took it, I got it towed to an alignment shop and they said that the frame, the frame is actually bent a little bit. It's diamond framed a couple inches. Also the whole suspension kind of got set back a little bit. So what they're gonna have to do is put it up onto the frame machine and pull the frame straight, which is kind of crazy that they could do that. At the same time, it, it ain't cheap, but it's also not, it's not the worst scenario that could have happened. There's a lot of things that could have gone much worse about that whole situation. Like I briefly mentioned, the patch of ice was on a bridge. Um, which is makes sense because a lot of the time bridges are where ice tends to form and so if I was going a little bit faster when I hit that ice I could have probably You know flew off the side of the bridge if I was going fast enough if there was another oncoming car I could have had a much worse head-on collision. There's just all kinds of things that could have gone wrong and I feel that although it sucks that I did have a small crash it just wasn't, it wasn't really much compared to the scope of things that could have happened. So my truck is currently in the shop. I'm gonna get it back by the middle of next week. So I'll be able to get it back out there and continue adventuring, which is most important. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I know that the last couple of videos have been a little bit different than the videos you're used to on this channel and we'll get back to the normal content as soon as possible, I promise. It's just kind of a, it's a busy time of year as I'm sure all of you guys can agree with. So we'll get back out there soon enough. Until then, you guys go out there and go on some adventures of your own, live life, beat the status quo. Y'all know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.